Hi guys, Mac here. So today I want to talk to you about time lapses and specifically how to do time lapses in Final Cut Pro. It surprises me sometimes that some of the stuff I push out, it's always the tiny little videos that I, I push out when I've been playing that I get the most questions about. And I put out a small time lapse a few days ago and I've re received several emails or, or notifications asking how to do time lapses in Final Cut Pro. Now it's pretty interesting because there's various ways of doing it. I, I mean, if you take how you get the, the information actually onto your camera, I mean, there's a simple way that you just set your camera up to film so for, and then speed the footage up in post. So for example, if you took an hour's footage and then speeded it up a hundred times, you'd end up with a 36 second time lapse. But there are a couple of problems with that. Firstly, a lot of cameras won't record for that long. You know, a lot of them, like the Sony's, for example, I think have a 29 minute cutoff. Uh, the other thing I found is that the footage is not quite as good as when I use proper photos for those time lapses. So, so if I actually take a time lapse using photos, I tend to get a better outcome. It's that latter bit that I was going to take you through. So how do we get all of our photos and we turn them into one time lapse movie? Now to take all those photos on your camera, you will need some way of having your camera take a photo every X number of seconds. There's various ways that you can do it. On the Canon, you can get a, a little uh, external interval device. I use this thing, for example, which is a, a MyOps mobile. It's probably a little bit pricey just to do that, but I'll stick a link to it down below. Also, a lot of cameras have the, the ability to do that built in, so I'm not gonna take you through how to do that bit, but what I will do is show you how I do it in Final Cut Pro. So let's go and have a look at that. And I'll, I've got you know a bunch of photos that I used from a time lapse a few days ago. So let's go and do it with those and I'll show you what it looks like. Here we are on Final Cut Pro. So let's have a look at the version number that I'm running here. You'll see that I'm on version 10.4.5. Now the process is very similar across the different versions. So hopefully this will apply for most of the versions I think. So you'll see that I've created a, a new project called Time Lapse Demo. And what I'm going to do is find some photos. There we go. Now these are not the photos that I wanted to use. I can't really find the ones that I was going to use, but these will do for the purposes of the demo. So what I'm going to do is select all of these JPEGs and just drag and drop them into the project here. There we go. That take a few moments to import. So let's just wait for that to finish. There we go, they're done, they're all imported. Now, the next bit's pretty easy. We're just gonna select all of the photos, drag and drop them straight into our timeline here. And that's it. Now, the problem with this is that each photo is gonna be displayed for 10 seconds, I think. Yeah, there we go. Now, that's obviously not a great time lapse. Now, the way we change this is we're gonna change the duration. Instead of being 10 seconds, we're gonna change it to one frame. And the way we do that, is, well, I normally do it with Control D, but let's have a look, see if we can find it on the menu. Change duration, there we are, Control D. There we go. Now this bit caught me out, because I couldn't quite work out how to do this for a little while. Now, I don't know if you can see, but all the numbers here have turned blue. What I'm gonna do is just change this to one frame. Now I couldn't quite work out how to do this. I don't know whether I'm just being particularly silly, but what I worked out is if I just hit the number one and then hit enter, what it's going to do is change all of those selected clips to one frame. And now when we play it, you'll see that we get the time lapse. And obviously it's compressed it down here. If you want to, you can zoom in. So let's just zoom into our clip. There we go. So what it's done is it's compressed each photo now into one frame. And then of course, when we play it back, we get our time lapse. Now you can of course at this point export it. If we have a look, you'll see that I've already exported it and here it is. There we go. Now it's not a great time lapse. The pictures could have been better, but they work okay for the purposes of this demo. I could have done a bit of color grading, for example, to uh, make this look, look a lot cooler than it does. That's essentially how you do it. Now there are some cooler things you can do. You'll see, for example, that the framing is, isn't quite right because of the different aspect ratio of the photos. So we can do some cool things with the zooming. So perhaps let's have a look at that. So to look at the zooming, the simplest way to work with this that I've found is I'm gonna turn all of these clips into a compound clip. And the way I do that is Command A to select all the photos. We can right click on there, say new compound clip. 
I'm just gonna call it time lapse demo clip or, or anything you like. And what it will do is it'll get rid of all the breaks and just turn it into one long video clip. Now once that's done, it just becomes a little bit easier to work with. Now there are other ways of doing this and I'm, I'm sure I'll get it in the comments. There's a million and other ways to do it. But what we can do now is we can change the scaling. Okay, it becomes really simple to do. Now one cool thing you can do with time lapses is have some movement in and out of frame as the time lapse is happening. So I'll show you how to do that as well. And you'll also get to see what I'm talking about. So what I'm gonna do is go right to the beginning of the clip here. Okay, now up on the video inspector on the right hand side, what I'm gonna do is add a keyframe and that's done with that little button on the right hand side there. So I'm just gonna click it. Now at that point, I'm also gonna zoom in to my time lapse. There we go, let's start about there. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is move all the way to the end. I should have zoomed in, but Never mind. Let's get to the end. Now when you get to the end, just hit the left key so you're one frame in. Now go back up to the inspector. We're gonna hit another keyframe, which you can see there, add a keyframe. And what I'm gonna do is just change the zoom so it moves out a little bit. I'm not gonna take it all the way because I still want it to fill, fill the frame. Now what that's going to do for us, it's going to add some movement to this time lapse. So let me show you what I mean when we play it. There we go, it adds some movement to the frame and I, I think it looks a lot better when you start adding stuff like that. Now of course you can then go and start adding your music and all that sort of good stuff. So let's have a, a look at the final product, let's export it. I'll export it at 1080 and we'll just see what the final uh, thing looks like. That's all done, didn't take very long at all. So let's have a look at the output, here we go. So you can immediately see the framing is a lot better. And if we play it, you'll see that slow movement uh, zoom out from the frame. And I, I think that looks far cooler than just a, a static time lapse. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. I'm not sure if it will have answered the explicit questions because the questions weren't that descriptive. So if you feel I haven't answered them, then uh, drop me a line in the comments or drop me an email like you did before. And uh, hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll understand your question a little bit better and try and take you through the bit that you're not quite getting.